very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? Awful. 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 Oh, no, Awful. what's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. So this little viewing party is starting to give me a lot of anxiety. Oh. Uh, and <laughs> it's just spiraling because... I feel as if every platform you tell me to try doesn't work and has some kind of weird, it can only work on this one browser, which for whatever reason won't work on your laptop. <sighs> Just... take... If we pull this out, Breathe. people better watch. People better yeah. listen to it. <laughs> yeah, we'll pull it off. Breathe. Breathe. I have. I have... <laughs> <laughs> we will find, yeah, we will find something that works on, on we, that works on your end. We will. I have a fallback. I always have a backup plan. That's 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 being that given my job, you know, you, you plan and you have contingencies. So yeah. <laughs> make a plan, execute the plan. If the plan given work, my job about expectations, <laughs> I am letting everyone know clear expectations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a different co-host for any future versions of this. <laughs> no, no, we'll make it work. I'm the internal optimist. You should know that by now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Um, speaking about optimism, DC superhero movies uh, have set out a new schedule. And starting off with the Batman, which was originally going to drop on June 25th, 2021, is now moved back to October 1st, 2021. The Flash, the movie, they should put it like a colon and say yeah. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra Miller, question mark, um, is now pushed up to June 3rd, 2022. And Shazam 2 is pushed back to November 4th, 2022. Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't even say it. I know Two what you're going to say. <laughs> you're only, only one. Of, yeah. Yeah. The only one you care about is the Batman. I know. I I do. But honestly, I I just, I also, for whatever reason, even when I list off the Batman, it's not the same with when we went through a few weeks ago the the new schedule for the MCU. Mm, fair point. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I feel bad for our Pats, partly because he's in a Christopher Nolan movie that is all screwed up now because of timing. And then he gets the Batman role and suddenly he's, He's back on top and everyone's talking about him. And now with COVID, the two big projects he was really driving are are stuck in this weird funk. So Yeah, but I thought they were really... I mean, Nolan still push, thinks that they can get Tenet out this year, so... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll see Tenant, whether it's on my mini laptop or if it's on a big screen. I don't know, but even if he doesn't, he might do a re-release in theaters when they're actually yeah. up and running and people are going to them. That's another thing. Just because suddenly the theaters are open doesn't mean people will necessarily go. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So far, I guess the only state that is crazy enough to open right now is georgia but but even so i mean i i know i personally probably will you know, will have a second thought before i before i go to any kind of mass gathering for for some time yeah i i honestly i'm so much of a hermit that i i barely go to mass gatherings <laughs> such a weird way to put it <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i mean uh, yeah it's just like you know it's like restaurants opening up or whatever i'm kind of like yeah i think i'm gonna keep doing this takeout thing it's this is working pretty well for me so <laughs> oh my god and i hardly ever go to restaurants but this is so off topic yeah anyways i i agree i think it's i think that's one thing that's going to be very interesting is how how everyone readopts in this new world whenever we are able to lift it knowing hey 
Japan and China are going through their second wave. So yeah. even if you do that, doesn't mean it's it's there's a vaccine or anything yet. So right. yeah, and actually, I, I was reading an article today about how Warner Media has even is is planning for uh, adjusting to the new normal after after uh, things do start to reopen and, and really looking to maybe go into more of a streaming model. And we've seen this with films. Uh, I mean, Trolls, too, was one that went to straight to streaming. Uh, I think Scoob, I saw, was going to go that route as well. Um, so, and, and we've heard rumblings, even though, you know, we know the MCU will definitely not go that route. They're going to continue, I think, to push to have it on their films on the big screen but uh you I, i'm sure we'll, we we've seen and we'll continue to see people adjusting and and maybe having things go straight to streaming well disney also had the fortunate timing of making their money before all of this mm-hmm. and so right now they are losing that money but they have a pretty hefty surplus with all of those avenger movies that have been yeah. released over the last two years. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'd be curious what that plan looks like because Disney, they, they are bleeding every single day with, with um, the movies that they are finished and they want to release, but mm-hmm. because of their event and their spectacle filmmaking, you're going to want that $25 IMAX ticket money and not the, Oh, buy this movie for nineteen ninety nine now. So exactly, exactly. Oh. Um, another one I forgot to mention is Venom Two is pushed back to October second, twenty twenty. Oh no, it was originally October second, twenty twenty, and it is now June twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. Right. <laughs> Have they even started shooting that? <laughs> um, I don't. You know, I, I'm not sure if they have, and um, I know this week they had the they finally did release the uh, I guess the subtitle for for the film uh, "Let There Be Carnage," uh, but uh, if, but you know I don't know if they were able to get production started on it. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Oh my god, that is such an on the nose because I haven't even seen the movie, and I could have predicted that that's what the subtitle is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I heard about it, people. I heard about it. <laughs> you don't have to watch movies anymore. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't. <laughs> oh man. What else did you put on here? Uh, the Mandalorian is starting early work on season three show. show they did finish shooting prior to the pandemic. So season two should drop probably sometime this year. Yeah, I think the original plan was for it to drop in the fall. Uh, I want to okay. say, if I recall, I think it was around the October time frame when uh, John Favreau said it was going season two was going to premiere. So makes sense. Makes sense. And lastly, another bit of Star Wars news: as another project is being de- developed for Disney Plus. This is a female-centric story from Russian Dolls creator Leslie Headland, and is set in a different timeline from the Skywalker saga. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think they are expanding their universe and. And I think they'll be, uh, I don't know if they're keeping the, the things under wraps right now as far as if it's going to go back to the older public, which I know there was some uh, talk about that with the, uh, I think there's a book series that was coming out. And then, you know, it could be set in a future timeline. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. That just, but it doesn't make sense to me. It is going to be set in a different timeline. Okay, well, Skywalker Saga canon, Raylo canon, um, happened. So if it's set in the future, it's still of the same timeline. It's just right. that the events, like, don't expect to see Kylo Ren. Well, it, yeah, you really can't. He's dead. Don't expect to see Ray Skywalker. Ooh, spoiler alert. Man, I'm killing <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point, everyone knows that. 
and yeah, forgive the, forgive us if you were planning on watching the the the, the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Man, maybe we should just we should just re-inspire me and instead of watching Earth X or whatever crossover was selected, we just watch Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Then I will have technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> There's some salvageable parts. Anyways, um, but but you understand my point, right? Yeah. Sky, yeah. like it doesn't have to take time. Even if you go back to Old Republic, that history still leads into the Skywalker saga. So so I just that I find that to be very odd that they said alternate timeline. What are you, the Flash? No. Oh. No, it's just alternate time period, I guess. But uh, you're, but you're right. It's, it's definitely going to be set apart from the Skywalker saga. But it, it but it, you're, but and I guess a whole new set of heroes, and and this time being very uh, female-led uh, cast, which um, you know, given but you know, given this, given the history of of Star Wars lately, I mean, this thing will probably like go through at least. Two directors, three writers, um, and who what who knows what else before it finally gets gets put into production. Yeah, and can we just let disclaimers about very female centric story? Okay, we get it. We're in a new decade, and 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 I understand history of females always not having dominant parts and even if you do have a main female character she's always still surrounded by men talking about men all of that however I just I feel like it's going to be a story and it it should be more about it's a story about a well-developed character Mm -hmm. who just so happens to be female yeah yeah I know and that's another thing I guess there's just something about the way that this is written I just, that really makes me kind of want to nitpick because it's just, I, I think that there's a lot of poor choice in words. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, quarantine mind. <laughs> no, 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 it's a fair point. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's how it was, that's how it's been reported. So, uh, as far as this new, this new project. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, quarantine mind. I may be nitpicking, but it's just I I I I hope one day it's not about that. And because I know that if that was a if the if the the Mandalorian, um, I forget what that was described as being, but it was never very male centric story. Yeah, <laughs> it's it was, never it was described a... as that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's funny. I mean, you could even do it like, uh, uh, you know, people of color story, or you know, fill fill in the qualifier as far as far as uh, classification of individuals or or a race or what or sex. I mean, it, yeah, it, that happens, and it, it it definitely was good good call out on that uh, as far as how they are describing this star oh. this next thing in the Star Wars. Okay, I think that. Was- Still there? I, I'm still here. That was yeah. just which I have been noticing that every now and then lately. I think we're due for one. Will I'm having this weird sense that we could have an earthquake. That one was definitely the largest oh. that I've felt in a while. Oh, wow! Hey, we film this in or we <laughs> film <laughs> <laughs> we record this in real time. <laughs> but no, my my um my yeah that was I, there was one in Juno when I lived yeah, there. I remember Sorry, that. Going yeah. off topic, but this is an interesting story. Yeah. But I was sleeping, and it happened in the morning, and and it felt as if there was a ghost. I swear to God, there was a ghost on the other end of the bed, and it was shaking my bed back and forth like it was it was the most odd feeling in the world wow yeah the one time we had an earth there is a fault line not too far from uh 
this section of North Carolina and and so we there was an earthquake and I completely missed it somehow. <laughs> I don't know. But I remember I was walking down the street, saw an old friend of mine, talked and we started talking and then this lady came running down the street and like screaming that there's an earthquake and a couple other people as well and and uh, I was like, Oh, was there? And it, it was it was pretty significant one too for for, for the East Coast, uh, where buildings were damaged and stuff in Virginia and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I completely like completely missed it. <laughs> yeah, I've only been through a few. Not the, I mean, I wasn't in Anchorage when their big one happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to get back on topic and in other news, yeah. the flash. Let's start with the flash. Okay, we can start there. Hey, you want to start? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll start with this one. So it uh, it finally did air because, you know, as we joked, whenever we saw the CW schedule, we were like, is it going to really happen? Because it seems like everything gets rescheduled when, at least once. But it did air. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I had planned on uh, watching the, the episode aired, I guess, The Exorcism of Wells. Uh, and, I, and I didn't get a chance to, and so, it, you know, I, I I I liked the episode. It wasn't it wasn't a great episode. It was an okay episode, but I, I really feel that this this the second six B has been really messed up because of all the all the scheduling snafus due to COVID, because I I felt dropping back into this episode after being gone for what five weeks mm -hmm. it it whatever momentum they had built up it, it completely evaporated for me when i started watching it right right and and so i i ended up watching it twice just so i could be give it yeah. give it a fair i know i i know but uh <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to like you know come down after, with something after that little fires uh, finale, which we'll talk about in a bit. But uh, just to be fair in my in my critique of the episode, and and I still felt the same way. I, I think um, you know one thing we did learn. Uh, Grant did confirm that the season will be cut short, so mm -hmm. we'll the 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 season will end on a cliffhanger with episode nineteen. And and so, I it was I, I liken it back to our discussions with uh, it, it, with uh, Swamp Thing because yeah. because now I feel like okay I know this season's cut short so how are they gonna how are they gonna manage this and these episodes are obviously filmed before COVID. Uh, one thing I did like about it and it was just you know a completely coincidence they had the nice little nice little uh, given that it was the anniversary of uh, Prince's death and having that uh, little diamonds and pearls uh, line in there um, whenever Ralph and, and Cisco uh, encountered the uh, Sue whenever she was in disguise. That was a nice little touch. Uh, I know it was completely coincidence, but it just, it just kind of, it was just kind of a cool little thing there. Uh, Ragdoll underdeveloped. They have yeah. such potential, such potential with that villain. But I just feel like all they do is focus on the creep factor. But there's so much more there that could be could be mined with that villain. Yeah. So yeah. yeah so so that's okay. sort of my general over over thoughts. And we could talk about more specifics after here. Hear your hear your uh, thoughts of the episode. So. I mean, I can't say much more than what you just said. I, I had very similar. It was very hard for me to remember where we left off. I, I didn't even think about going back. We all know I'm not a really big fan of the season of The Flash. I've ever since everything went on about Carver and his organization, which I'm forgetting, Black Hole. It's yeah. Black Hole. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, and then this episode in particular, it really stuck out to me. Carver sucks as a villain. He is mm -hmm. a very caricature, and he, the 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 actor, geez, who did yeah. that casting? That was awful casting, FYI. Yeah. 
And it's so obvious when that actor is playing against the actress who plays Eva or Eve, because she actually is doing a good job. She is. However, and I don't know if I would call it underdeveloped so much as why I, I don't like it when to to increase the villain's capability and quickness, we have to decrease our hero's smart <laughs> intelligence yeah. level. Because Iris looks like a fool. <laughs> She's all trying to figure out a way out. And, and, and in my mind, six weeks have also passed in that world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Girl, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is going on a bit long when you know she has the ability to control the mirror. And she's like, come on, Iris. And, and, and uh, Barry, too. And something that was odd about this episode, Ragdoll... I completely agree with you. Very underdeveloped. Um, however, what really struck me as odd is even not having watched the most recent episodes recently, mm-hmm. I still felt as if the ending of this episode completely unearned, left field, made no sense. I don't understand why Barry isn't... Fr- isn't it, I know he's, he's freaking out, but he yeah. is not... There was something about the way that ending was choreographed, which j- just did not work for me at all. And then everything with Joe. Yeah. Yes. I, I hated, mm-hmm. and I knew it. I knew he was going to pull the wire himself. And I'm just, yeah. oh, and, and everything's going to be fine. See, I, yeah. See, I'm glad yeah. you brought up about yeah. Joe. I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> I, you know, to me, this episode and creative this work would have worked so much better for me if it was actually Joe who had been a doppelganger instead of David because mm-hmm. because Joe was doing things he was it, Joe's always been a very reasonable character mm-hmm. and and so for him to continue to press the way he did in this episode just seemed out of character for him so to me, it would have been better to, especially if Eva's goal is is to freeze out all of Barry's friends and families by um, creating these mirror doppelgangers, and you know they, they will find a way to do just as a side note, a doppelganger somehow in the Arrowverse. It's just it's just their 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 go to trope, uh, even now even though now it's using the mirrors instead of the multiverse. Um, I felt that Joe, yeah, it it, it, it would have made more sense to, to, to me for him to be a mirror um, cre- creation than than David Singh because it was like when I saw David Captain Singh, re, you know, re- react that way and stuff. It's just sort of like, okay, now what did I miss? Where, when did I miss the switch out? Because. Um, with because we've seen the switch out with Iris, we saw it with Camilla, and it says at some point we should have seen it happen with David. So maybe it happened, and I just can't remember because because the way the wonky scheduling has happened this year not not the, to the fault of their well of their own, at least with the last few weeks. Um, so there's that piece, and then and then with Iris, you're right, it it didn't land how I think they wanted it to land for me either. Yeah. With, um, because honestly, Barry, there were several, I mean, there's been several signs all throughout, but, you know, throwing up the flashpoint, throwing up the losing your parent, you know, now, you know, line, you know, no matter how frustrated Iris would get with Barry, she would not stoop that low to, to, to given that he's lost both parents, she would never, ever go that route. Um, and so, and then, so, I mean, whenever she said that, that should have been like, ding, 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 light bulb, Barry, this is not your iris. Instead of right. it having to go to that melodramatic kick, kick him out of the house moment. Um, and, and, and so 
I, yeah, so I agree that didn't really land for me the way it, 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 it should have landed or how they intended for it to, to land as for me as a viewer. Yeah, yeah. It just, I mean, even from, I, it's, to your point about them reusing tropes, the whole, this is what's really going on and the viewers are in the know. Mm-hmm. I, there's no stakes attached to it. I, I, I'm a viewer. I know Iris is a doppelganger. So right. do I care that fake Iris kicked Barry out of the house? Not really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> why should I care about that fake Iris? Lead with that. So, so there is no surprise. There is no heartache for me because it's not real. Exactly. And and so that's where the the issue lies with the Flash in this season. And as much as I do want to blame scheduling. Scheduling can only get it so far. I cannot even guarantee that had they come back from their their planned hiatus with this episode, would I have been on board with it? I don't think so. I don't yeah. think this episode would have worked for me at that point either. Now, it doesn't mean they can't finish off the season and maybe leave arguably a better taste in my less in my mouth because we've always commented that another issue with these shows is they are too long, too many episodes. Mm-hmm. And the flash, I feel like if you get to episode eighteen or twenty, like, okay, why didn't you just end there? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And Gr- and Grant did say that uh, episode nineteen is going to end with a with a cliffhanger. So uh, I am looking forward to seeing what that cliffhanger is. Um, and, and as Ooh, I said, call episode- me, call me, call me. Okay, go ahead, um, go ahead. Think Iris kicks Barry out of Central City. <laughs> yeah. Next logical. That's not, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I will say one thing that did actually did what I did like about the episode that did work for me this week was Ralph and Sue. I did like that. I did like their interaction. Sure. It did. Yeah. It actually it did actually work for me. Well, I'm I'm happy for you. I'm, yeah. I'm very happy that you can find your silver lining out of the flash. <laughs> I always try because that one. For me. I saw I saw Dibney and and Sue and I thought to myself, "You're still on this show." Who <laughs> 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 um, And 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 anytime Cisco was on, I'm I'm just thinking to myself, "When is he gonna leave? <laughs> when is he?" Gonna leave? <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. I I I can see why. I I mean, arguably that that was the best part parts of this episode is because um it was banter it was a lot of jokes and and character progression yeah yes you nailed it you just you you nailed it that is why i liked it because there was growth and development in 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 both of these characters and getting to the place that we know they will ultimately end up but it but it, it it worked and it did service the overall larger story of this of six B as far as uh, Carver and Black Hole trying to um, uh, gain the advantage, but it, but it, it 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 used it used supporting characters in in a way that it, you know makes this, makes them grow and. Unlike what we saw with Allegra, who I'm still trying to figure out what her purpose is <laughs> in, in the show, other than this weird side story with her and Nash, uh, but um, from you know, helping Nash overcome his guilty feelings of, of losing um, uh, of, of losing the mirror version, the doppelganger of her. Uh, but but beyond that, I'm just sort of like, okay, yeah, she's just kind of there. So hopefully, and I know she's been signed on for uh, as a regular for season seven. So hopefully, as we get further into this season, they will develop her a little bit more. Um, probably not, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. All right, and um, so now we can talk about little fires everywhere. They had their season finale 
or series finale? Is it a season finale? I I think they they gave themselves it's sort of like it's sort of like Watchmen. I think it was maybe intended to be a one off, but they left a little bit there that if they wanted to come back for a second season, they could possibly do it. So I am so mixed about this show. I'm so mixed about this finale. I can see good parts. I can also see some bad parts. I'm glad, spoiler alert, it wasn't Izzy, but it was Izzy, and it was the kids. And there was something about those moments that really felt just weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, let's do this. Let's burn down the house. It's just, I... But by the... Halfway through the episode, I started predicting dialogue. <laughs> mm, oh boy. And I just was not surprised. I mean, it just, I, I, I guess overall I'm kind of mixed because I'm sure you're going to raise five points, which are really good and really strong. But in general, I, I wasn't, I wasn't happy last night when I finished watching and I was like, Ugh, okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, I, oh, for me, yeah, you're right. Overall, I felt like they say the best for last mm-hmm. uh, with this series. Uh, it, it, it was, it was, uh, it was. I don't want to say slow burn because that's just so easy to have fun. But, uh, but I'm so confused. Did you like it or did you not like it? I liked it. Okay. Okay. I liked it. I liked it overall. I liked the season overall. I mean, it had its ups and downs, but I felt that this, I, 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 as I said, they saved the best episode for last. And, yeah, I uh, think the, yeah, I, I think the few episodes were way better, but yeah. Go on. Yeah. Um, I, and it may be, I think maybe it's just, and for me, it's, it's that the performances, I think maybe did it as far as just, uh, Reese Witherspoon, uh, just completely losing it, and uh, which was you know, c- considering the characters that she tips that she plays a lot of times, uh, her just that moment when she just completely lost it and yelled at Izzy, I didn't want you anyway, um, uh, and and also the moment with Lexi with the um, whatever Lexi. Um, confess to having having the abortion and mm-hmm. saying that she's not didn't want to be perfect and just a shrill just a, the sheer manic like deathly eat, scream back that you are perfect and so you know though that those 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 moments like that in the episode where it was just such raw emotion really really drove home the the uh, things that have been building up over the course of the season for me. I yeah, agree that- I, I, I agree that that one moment with Lexi was was great. However, I feel as if the moment with Izzy, we saw that in the previous episode. Yeah, yeah. In the car. And yeah, so, we did. And so, it, to me, it felt repetitious, where the only difference is the kids were around, and the kids finally realized that Izzy's relationship with her mom isn't all made up in her head. She isn't being a brat. No, her mom literally does hate her, so it was recognition there. But for me, I was just like, okay. Um, yeah, moving, yeah. Moving along. I've, I've seen this fight now a few times. So. Yeah, yeah it, it, we have seen the fight some, a few times. And, and, and this, I think it was there because I think they had to set the things in motion for the siblings to burn down the house because in, oh, absolutely. yeah yeah because i mean this and the reason why i say that is uh it just obviously uh, the, the in the adaptation from the book in the book is he does burn down the house and then they changed it in the tv show for the siblings to do it and this was sort of i guess the dramatic way to trigger trigger the event to, to make that happen so which, so, which I, I guess is my point. Why I didn't really like it is because it felt forced. It mm-hmm. felt as if 
the viewer is having to relive this fight now for the 15th time right. just so the the siblings can see it and lead to the overall action and and to me i'm just like well that that's force that's not organic the characters naturally wouldn't have seen that right but I, at the same time, I do understand that they were also building up Reese Witherspoon's character, Elena, to have this psychotic break and, and for everything to burn down. It's just, there, and this is what I was saying before, there's something about it where I recognize the strong parts of the writing. They kicked it off with this beautiful flashback and the idea that once a human touches a baby bird, the, it, its mother rejects itself forever or rejects it forever mm -hmm. yeah i love that i love the circular storytelling of the final art project that mia creates about the town and being locked in a cage and yeah. everything but there was also something so melodramatic and so forced where i'm just like you finally win your court case and and it just so happens that we get a scene of the baby not not going to sleep and 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 she the mom wants to get out of bed and go check on it and the husband's like no she'll be fine well that just so happens to be the night that her real mom comes and takes her away I'm like what yeah. what the heck <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i, I mean this again i i agree with you there i mean they're they're it Things were pretty much went. I mean, there was nothing surprising in this in this in, in this finale. I will, I will agree with. I, I will I will say that on that point, yes. There, as you said, you could predict lines of dialogue. Yes, they, there there were there were definitely things that would happen. I mean, for like for example, I mean, we knew BB would never win the court case as far as getting her her kid back. Uh, one just from a storytelling point, but two, but I think it it also again reiterated the uh, the structural inequalities that that were in Shaker Heights and and the structural you know, classism and racism that's there too. So uh, and and, and yeah, so this this series all through all all, all eight, eight episodes has been on the news with, with those points left and right. So, I mean, it, it's this, you know, it stayed true to form, uh, the kids losing it and like burning it down the house. Yeah. That was completely forced. And, and I mean, it seemed, I mean, it seemed to me that maybe Lexi of all of the three, uh, may have realized what her boy ex-boyfriend was trying to tell her last in last week's episode um so it you know it, it did make sense to, you know it, it made some sense for her to maybe go that route but then again you know they have all the privilege and stuff and so it, it just yeah it, it did seem forced and so that didn't work for me. Now, now Mia's storyline actually did work for me as far as, you know, whenever she talked to, to Izzy about the cage and, and it burned down the house. And, and it, but again, it was consistent with her, her character. I mean, whenever she has burned down what are her relationships with people or, or situations and stuff, she does to set fire to it and moves on to the next town. So, um, so, yeah, so, I mean, again, yeah, it is... I, I, I agree that whole part about humans being resilient and even if you do make a mistake and or burn something down and destroy it, new life can erupt from that. Sometimes you have to break something in order to put it back together the way it should have been the whole time. And, and I like, and again, I like all those metaphors. Those make sense. What happens with Pearl and Mia... Mm -hmm. uh, that resolution I'm, I'm completely fine with mm -hmm. i i'm completely fine with um overall that aspect of the story i think that one of the most natural character moves in this episode is how how uh 
the the whole abortion name issue and Lexi constantly using Pearl's name or events that happened to her catches up with her Mm -hmm. and also makes Elena forced to recognize how she isn't the mom that her parents or her her children deserve or wanted and and also and and that conversation between Mia and Elena in the hallway I thought that was brilliant writing but I guess overall for me those small moments don't add up enough for me to walk away happy um because I didn't like how they ended Izzy's storyline I mean she gets screwed over either way you you think about yeah. it I mean she she uh, she's probably going to get picked up by somebody and hurt real bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is a fact. I, I just, there's something, about, and thank God that whole memory dream sequence was a dream sequence. I was very worried. I was like, what the heck? Kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I like, I like all those points. It's just, for some reason, I felt as if I felt very opposite of you, where I liked a lot more of the earlier episodes and the longer things happen, the more melodramatic it got for me. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah. I could see that. I, I could totally see that. Um, you know, one of the things I do wish that they had set some time, some, um, set aside some time for was the, the, the ramifications of all what happened. Uh, because, it would have been interesting, you know, given that the the especially given that the siblings went to the extremes that they did and set the house on fire, um, and it, it, you know, would Lexi still and still end up going to Prince to to Ivy League? Would Trip and and Moody reconcile, or will they still be estranged? You know, all you know, there's so you know, what you know what happens with Elena and Bill. Uh, I mean, Bill, you know, because they, you know, they did have a, a, a pretty, you know, a pretty uh, epic showdown as far as whenever he confronted her about the, you know, meeting up with her ex boyfriend and in New York, and then also, you know, clearly he had not let go of, you know, finding the telephone number from all those years ago, and he just he's held on to that anger for for many years, and in this event calls it to resurface and, 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 you know, blow up and he confronted her about it. So, you know, there's just so many, there was just so many things that were left unresolved. And that's why I kind of joked about early, when we first started about the, the watchman having that same kind of ending where it, it left, uh, it, it, it left things open to interpretation for the viewer and, we could fill in the blanks and think, well, maybe did they really learn from, did they really learn from all of this or are they, or are they still so, so, so tied to their privilege and stuff that it, it wasn't, it wasn't something that happened, but they don't learn from it and grow from it. I see. I disagree. I Watchmen that finale concluded everything to me. It you could make a second season, of course, because there's there's um an 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 inception moment at the very very end, which is like, oh, is she does she now have Doctor Manhattan's powers? Man, am I spoiling things for people? <laughs> but. That being said, the overall story did get wrapped up in that final hour, all of the pot lines. Mm -hmm. So even though they left the door open, it wasn't, it wasn't more the story that they set out to tell in Watchmen start to finish was cohesive and everything was wrapped up. And this story, I feel like to your point, they left a lot of doors open, a lot of well, what happens now? And honestly, I, frankly, the only two characters that I could really think of, I need maybe one or two answers of is Izzy and Elena. 
the other characters, I, I think they did. Me and Pearl definitely got closure in in the season finale. Uh, Trip yeah. and Booty, I think they kind of got the short end of the stick because by the point of escalation, their little fighting over girl was was minor compared to everything else that people were were blowing up about. Uh, I mean, Lexi had her moment. Does she go to Princeton? I don't think that matters because I think in the moment when she yells with her mom, I think that it really comes full circle to her that she does wake up. And, and does it matter if she goes to Princeton? Not in my opinion, but I think she, she has recognized her own privilege or how her mother, the person she's always wanted to be like, isn't a good role model. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I do take a, I do disagree with you though about Pearl and Mia um, because I mean we we you know we we ended there with Pearl learn Mia Pearl learning about her grandparents, but but. There's still an open question about whether or not Mia recon- reconciles with her parents. So, so I mean, oh, I, you're pulling it. You're 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 really. I know it's a reach. It. I know it's a reach. I know it's a reach. But I mean, I, yeah. I mean, is it enough to sustain an eight episode season? Probably not. Definitely not. But and I, and I, and I guess that's what that's just sort of my point. Is uh, as a viewer, you can still. Yeah, you know, if they were to do an epilogue uh, of a two-hour mini movie or you know, two-hour event or whatever to answer some of these questions, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I got invested enough in the characters, I, I, especially Mia, Pearl, and Elena, that I, I would want to know the answers to some of those questions. And I got disinvested enough where I don't, <laughs> <laughs> which which is fine. I think it's. I yeah. think it's interesting how I was the one who found this show and brought it to you and said, you got to watch it. And then by yeah. the end of it, you're like, no, I want more. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Uh, speaking about shows, I am curious, did you get a chance to watch Run? I have not yet. I, I got, So we, we found this um, uh, show on Amazon Prime uh, called uh, Prashat. It's a, it's a Bollywood Indian comedy drama that uh that i found i'll 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 send you the send you the the link uh to it it's uh so i I fell into that it's a very it's a very funny show so i've been watching that this week uh so i haven't had a chance so run run is on my uh watch list for the weekend because the show that i fell into this week uh is short it's like eight episodes and like 30 minutes each so i only got two left All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, that's W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me at Twitter, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. We are having a cross, April 26th, we will be holding an Arrowverse crossover party and dropping that episode probably the following day. The poll results are in and the crisis on Earth X won, which is surprising because I did secretly want Flash vs. Arrow because I, I'm feeling a bit nostalgic as of late. Um, however, this was also another one I would be happy to revisit. If you guys had voted for Crisis on Infinite Earth, I would I would not be doing this. <laughs> no. No, we would have made an executive decision for sure. <laughs> um, please follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Bye.